Hey everyone, I am relatively confident this is going to be an easy fix. What I'm doing, taking off this old knob that uh, has a lock up here. Unfortunately, I don't have the key for this lock. So I went to my local uh, Menards and picked up a replacement um, key T-handle lock, which is hopefully just going to let me take these two screws out, pop this guy in its place, and everything will be good. Who knows if that's how it's going to work out, but let's find out. Alright, so first things first, got to pull the screws out. Now fortunately, it's not locked right now, so I can turn the handle and get super easy access. These just screw straight out. And do the same to the other screw. Wow, I have a feeling these are not the correct screws to be used. So they're completely different lengths. Now this won't just pull out right now. It's actually held in place from the back side, so we're gonna have to open this door up and uh, take a look at that. All right, so what's holding this in place is this little metal ring that goes around with spur shaft. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this on the video too well. Now, uh, I've heard, I've heard say you can use a screwdriver and kind of chisel it back up in there and pry it down. It's never really worked very well for me. What I recommend doing is just taking a pair of pliers, it doesn't have to be fancy ones like these, but just a pair of pliers that are open wide enough to go around that. And doing this will ruin this ring, so uh, make sure if you're going to do this you either have another ring to use or you will not need it. And then just hold it in place. It can be kind of tricky because it is pretty thin, but you should be able to get a uh, grip on both sides with the pliers. These may actually not be the best ones to use because they're smooth. I should have probably grabbed some with the teeth. Another thing you can do is take a pair of wire cutters or a bolt cutter and if you can get that underneath the metal uh, you can slice it because it does have four little cuts in it. Uh, it actually looks... never mind you can't see the one that's in the the new one that's in the package. So I'm gonna try and do this with that. That doesn't work. I can't reach in there. Okay, I got some space in there now with the screwdriver on the back side. And I should have enough. Or I can cut it. And there we go. Now, uh, depending on the quality of the tools you have, you may not want to use a pair of wire cutters on this. Um, I have some very high quality Knipex, uh, and you can actually use the wire cutters to cut finish nails, and it won't hurt them. I've seen it, I've seen it demoed and I've actually done it personally. So this is what that little metal ring looks like. It's basically a washer with a square hole in the center, and then these little slices on the side that let it flex so it can slip up onto that metal shaft and not come off. And the piece that fell is just a, it's a handle for the inside. So you can grab it and twist it because how this works, when this twists, get it back on there, it pulls the chains coming off the side of it. And those pull two little tabs on the sides of the garage door that uh, pretty much is what locks it in place. And when those tabs slide in, they come out of a little, uh, they fit into like this little bracket kind of thing. So it can't slide up and down. How do we do that? There you go. So pretend this finger is the tab and this is the bracket on the side. The tab sticks out, can't go up and down because of the bracket. But when you twist the handle, the tab pulls back and now it can open and close. So we're gonna close the door again, pull it off, put the new one on. It's so easy, a kid could do it. Literally that's all it takes, it just pulls straight out. There we go, all right, so now we have the new one. It twists. It can be locked so it can't twist, and we're just gonna pop it right in. Alright, so I found a screw. Uh, it had some almond colored paint on it, but that's alright, it'll work. So I'm just gonna push that in there, right into there. And screw this guy in. 
a little bit longer, but I don't think that's going to matter. And then we will put in the screw that was here originally on this side. Snug it down, but not too tight because it's literally just going into this little metal plate and the fiberglass of the door. Alright, so that's snug. That twists. Let's make sure it's hot. Alright, it's caught. It's all good. Yay! Now there's just a few more little tweaks to do. So it's just going to be the installation of the little metal ring now. Now these rings, I don't know if you're going to tell too well on the camera, they stick out a little bit on the back side. And that lets you know which side's front, which side's the back. So the back side, as you push the square rod in, you want it so it slides in easily. So it should be kind of beveled inward. And then the back side should be beveled outward because the idea is that it can't pull off, but it can slide on. They're always hard to do. So you kind of line it up. And then, uh... And then push for all your worth and hope that the moon's at the right phase. There's the right amount of humidity in the air. It's the right temperature. Um, let's see, it's the right zodiac sign. I don't know, there's so many things that make this work or not work. Make sure that, you know, the right amount of cats died in the last week. The right amount of deer were hit on the county highway. You know, all those kind of things affect your ability to push one of these on. Alright, so it's kind of on there. And what I'm doing, I just use my pliers to create an opening that fits around that shaft so I have a little more space to push on rather than just trying to use my two thumbs. You could also take a block of wood and drill a hole that the square shaft can fit in, and a little larger. Put it over there and kind of tap it on with a hammer. Could do that. I don't have a drill on me right now, so I'm not. But it's another viable option. And basically, you just keep pushing it up till it's relatively snug. Now what this does, in addition to making sure it doesn't just fall out, which it shouldn't because there's two screws on the front, is now if somebody were to come along and take those two screws out, this is still holding it in place. You could use it without this, but then to break into your garage, all somebody has to do is take out the two screws and now they can twist the whole handle because the lock doesn't keep this from twisting from this end, it keeps it twisting from the front end where the screws are. So if somebody takes the screws out, wait a minute, so if somebody takes the screws out, Oh, but they can't take the screws out if it's locked because then the handle's in the way. So that's how it works. All right, let's just wiggle this on a little more. A little more. All right, I like that. Looks good to me now. This has always bugged me. And I say always, but I've only owned the place for not even a month. I'm just a little too loose, so what I'm going to do Move it one link over, so there's a little less slack hanging in there. And then I'm going to squeeze this S-ring shut. And that'll take out a little more slack as well. There we go, so there's a little less slack. That's it, replacing lock on a garage door. Piece of cake, nothing to it. I should have made sure that was the right key for the lock before I installed it, but can't imagine it's not. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned something. Make sure you smash the like button if you liked it. If you didn't like it, uh, there's a dislike button someplace hidden under some menu someplace. I think that you could spend like an hour finding and click it if you really wanted, or you could just, you know, click away and not watch. And um, yeah, see you guys next time.